السلام علیکم اینڈ ویری گڈ آفٹر نون تھنک اہیڈ ود اے سی سی اے ایک اے سی سی اے کا انیشیٹو ہے جس میں ہم ڈسکس کرتے ہیں ڈفرینٹ پرسپیکٹو کرنٹ سچویشن اکنامک پرسپیکٹو ایز ویل ایز سوشل پرسپیکٹو سو اٹس آل اراؤنڈ یوزنگ سرٹن ریسرچ اینڈ ڈیٹا یوزنگ سرٹن ایکسپرٹس اور ان کی مدد سے ہیلپ کریں اب سوسائٹی کو بھی اور بزنسز کو بھی اور سب سے امپورٹنٹلی اپنے ممبرس اے سی سی اے اسٹوڈنٹس اور اے سی سی اے ممبرس کو کہ وہ ان ان پرسپیکٹو کو دیکھ سکیں اور اس پہ اپنی اوپینینس بیلڈ کر سکیں وائی پرسپیکٹوز آر امپورٹنٹ ہم اپنی زندگی جو گزارتے ہیں وہ ہماری کچھ یقین ہوتے ہیں ہمارے کچھ ایمان ہوتا ہے اور ہمارے کچھ فیت ہوتے ہیں اور وہ فیتھ جو ڈیولپ ہوتے ہیں ہمارے وہ سارے کے سارے ان ایکسپیرینسز پہ اور ان اوپینینس پہ ہوتے ہیں جو ہم اپنی سراؤنڈنگ سے کلیکٹ کرتے ہیں اور جب ہم وہ پرسپیکٹو کلیکٹ کرتے ہیں تو وہ ہمیں ہیلپ کرتا ہے زندگی کو اور ریالٹیز کو آبجیکٹولی دیکھنے کے لیے ان ریالٹیز کو جب ہم آبجیکٹولی دیکھتے ہیں تو وہ پھر ہمارے ایکشنز میں کنورٹ ہوتا ہے اور تھنک ہیڈ ود اے سی سی اے کا پرپز بھی یہی ہے کہ اے سی سی اے جو ورلڈ وائڈ ریسرچ کر رہا ہوتا ہے جس پہ بہت سے لوگوں کی اوپینینس آ رہی ہوتی ہیں جس میں آپ سروے کر رہے ہوتے ہیں جس میں ایکسپرٹ اپنی اوپینینس دے رہے ہوتے ہیں یا کچھ ڈیٹا اینالائز کر رہے ہوتے ہیں اس کی بیس پہ ایک وے فارورڈ ڈسائڈ کیا جا سکے ایک فیوچر کے حوالے سے دیکھا جا سکے آج سے پانچ سال دس سال بعد کیا ہو رہا ہوگا سو دیٹس دا انیشیٹو وچ تھنک اہیڈ ود اے سی سی اے جہاں پہ ہم انکریج کرتے ہیں اپنے اسٹوڈنٹس کو اپنے ممبرس کو امپلائرس کو اور سوسائٹی کو ان جرنل کہ وہ ایک فیوچرسٹک ویو لے سکے اینڈ دے کین تھنک اہیڈ میرا نام سجید اسلم ہے ایم ہیڈ آف اے سی سی اے پاکستان اور آج اس پرسپیکٹو کو ڈسکس کرنے کے لیے ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہیں حسن داؤد بٹ صاحب آپ چیف ایگزیکٹو آفیسر ہیں کے پی کے بورڈ آف انویسٹمنٹ اینڈ ٹریڈ کے اور اس سے پہلے آپ پروجیکٹ ڈائریکٹر رہے ہیں سی پیک کے پلاننگ کمیشن میں سو ویلکم ٹو دا شو حسن داؤد صاحب السلام علیکم جی وعلیکم السلام سر کین یو سی می سر یا وی کین وی کین پرفیکٹلی سی یو حسن صاحب So meanwhile, we get Hassan Saab back. So, uh, um, today's topic is Hassan Saab. Ke saath, Hassan Saab, you are, you are there. You are back. We can see you. Yeah. Welcome, to the, welcome to Think Ahead with ACCA. So, today's topic we have selected and you have definitely a very big contribution and a big view. Bhi hai. What is, we normally talk about the economic impact. We have talked about the impact of healthcare impact. We have talked about the business impact. Pe bhi baat ki. لیکن ایک بہت بڑا ایریا جس کو ابھی تک ہم نے ٹچ نہیں کیا تھا وہ آج ہم آپ کے ساتھ ٹچ کرنا چاہیں گے سوشل امپیکٹ آف کووڈ نائنٹین ہاؤ دا سوسائٹی از گوئنگ ٹو چینج اور وہ جو چینجز سوسائٹی میں انفرادی طور پہ انڈیویژلس میں اور افراد میں جو اب روٹینز اور بہیویئرس چینج ہوں گے اس کا ایک کیا امپیکٹ آئے گا گوئنگ فارورڈ چاہے ہم انڈسٹری کے حوالے سے دیکھیں چاہے ہم ریلیشن شپس کے حوالے سے دیکھیں اور چاہے ہم بزنسز کے حوالے سے دیکھیں تو ٹو اسٹارٹ ود میرا پہلا کوشچن یہ ہے کہ What challenges, اگر ہم ایک اوور ویو لینا چاہیں اور آپ کا پرسپیکٹو لینا چاہیں تو کووڈ نائنٹین پہ اس وقت جو چیلنجز اور اپرچونیٹیز ہیں وہ کیا ہیں آپ کے پرسپیکٹو پہ بسم اللہ رحمان الرحیم بفور آئی ریئلی اسپیک اباؤٹ دا ٹاپک دیٹ یو جسٹ ہائی لائٹ اٹ ٹو لائک ٹو تھینک اے سی سی اے یور یور ممبرز گلوبلی یور اسٹوڈنٹس اینڈ یور سیلف اینڈ یور مینجمنٹ I think these series of discussion would uh, bring us to a conclusion where we can actually take Pakistan forward and also the world at large. Uh, before we speak about, uh, you know, its social impact, I would also like to just uh, speak about that, uh, you know, the, the urgency of the matter is that it is pursuing the world to, to you know, look at various options. Uh, the economies perhaps around the globe are at a grinding halt and this is a, a serious concern for each one of us. I mean, irrespective of which sector of the society we represent, it is it is serious concern for all. And this, this would perhaps, uh, one word that you would hear in my short talk would be unprecedented. And You would hear it almost everywhere. This, this is an unprecedented challenge. This is an unprecedented pandemic, which perhaps is affecting not just the, the developing world but and the underdeveloping world, but the developed world also. And it perhaps started from, from China, which is the 
second largest economy of of the world uh you know the uh, it, it it had this started all the episode started in february uh, mid and later part of february and then perhaps by early march it started knocking at our doors and by 23rd of march you know uh, the, uh, the government and the academia and then the medical fraternity was aware that it is now entering pakistan so there in lot of a uh, lot of uh, uh, new uh, initiatives were taken in terms of uh, lockdown and slow down uh, and also um, you know uh, inbound flights were re- restricted the important thing and the lesson that we learned initially from china was uh, regarding the lockdown was and was that china initially identified uh, uh, pockets where the academic was hitting them hard and some part like wuhan they uh, immediately enforce a complete lockdown and the remaining part like shanghai which are also their big business and industry hubs they initiated their uh, slow down similarly in pakistan we 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 started this and uh, the uh, the crisis perhaps as per the medical experts was that it would hit urban center first then the rural center and some of the industries would be hit hard uh, as opposed to perhaps agriculture and some of the other uh, like the food industry so based on that uh, uh some uh, initial regulations were taken and i was part of the task force which was working on indes- exemptions to the industries and also what sort of uh, um, trade and commerce activities should be allowed within within khyber pakhtunkhwa and of course it would have its impact in 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 rest of the country i'm sure you understand that punjab remains the food basket of the country and also sin because of its proximity to the indian ocean remains very relevant as far as the economic activity is concerned but khyber pakhtunkhwa because of its geographic location lies right in the hub of all uh, uh, trade activities whether they are inbound and outbound going towards afghanistan or moving into the country we are also the largest uh, uh, tobacco exporter we also Uh, export a lot of steel and uh, cement to afghanistan so in in that case we and we have a, a large size population so the government all in all uh, initiated uh, these lockdowns starting from peshawar and rest of uh, khyber pakhtunkhwa and i'm i'm sure you would uh, you would understand that from an epidemiological perspective it would now uh, perhaps enter into its uh, economic uh, paradigm and then from there for perhaps a political paradigm and then later into a socio socio economic or a social um, uh, standpoint you know this is how such uh, natural catastrophes and pandemics have a natural flow in in terms of uh, disrupting the entire fabric of this society we also believe and i i, I am quite uh, convinced that perhaps we need to, the world order per people talk about it and i was in another debate we were talking about the the shape of the world in terms of geopolitics i i think pakistan would remain rele- relevant any in any framework that we we talk about either we speak about china dominating the world uh, geopolitics or if it's the west but uh, the location of pakistan right in the center would make it prominent and i i think this also provides an opportunity uh, to the developing countries like pakistan to actually uh, reinvigorate their uh, their uh, uh, business practices and perhaps move into a, uh, a, an, an an structure where our health and wellness industry and health and wellness sector could be improved this also gives us an opportunity to think about our healthcare to think about our education to think about our urban and uh, rural planning and also our business uh, sector so that you know we can uh, move ahead in 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 a in a better pakistan uh, perhaps but from an from an uh, utopian perspective to a disgraced perspective uh, i would like to take Uh, a middle ground and i would just first identify some industries which would be hit hard both in pakistan and elsewhere 
for Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, I, we are cognizant of the fact that our tourism industry, our transport industry would be hard hit. And this perhaps would also translate globally because where the airline industries is, uh, is uh, facing the brunt and also tourism industry globally with, uh, with Paris being hit hard, Europe, uh, Spain, uh, perhaps London, uh, and many uh, such places in the uh, United States of America being being hit uh, tourism-wise. So this sector perhaps would take much longer to recover. Uh, but all my assumptions and all my uh, talk would be, would be around the fact that, inshallah, we should be able to recover and find a vaccine by perhaps uh, three months, uh, God willing, and perhaps if not, uh, then maximum time frame that I think would, uh, uh, in which we should be able to find uh, vaccine should be by December 2020. If it goes beyond, then all assumptions would uh, would fail. And I do not find an, any economist or any other social pundit which can predict how the world would be if this pandemic is not controlled by by 2021, the, the entire world would would have a, would have a, a catastrophic turn, turn around, uh, and uh, we would then again have to uh, look at these models, perhaps in 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 time frames. The other area that perhaps would uh, would uh, would not be affected would be the food industry, and I've been saying this because uh, for us, Ramzan is coming where the. Uh, the food industry profits the most, and also our borders with Afghanistan are open for for uh, three days a week. So that also caters for uh, perishable uh, export to Af Afghanistan and beyond to Central Asian Republic. Because of the uh, because of the transport sector and because of the pandemic, I think the health insurances for uh, air freight and also for uh, for maritime freight would increase. We would also see uh, congestion at airports cargo-wise and also congestion at ports, which perhaps would take around three to six months if uh, the pandemic uh, is, is addressed. We will also um, uh, see that uh, perhaps the biggest surge would be in telemedicine and digital transformation of Pakistan. I'm happy to say that I am already witnessing a lot of new entrepreneurs and startups looking at uh, uh, telemedicine as uh, as one of the avenues where they can venture quickly. The government is providing uh, a lot of incentives in that uh, respect. I also see that uh, Pakistan would jettison into uh, digital era or the fourth industrial revolution much quicker than perhaps we were anticipating, or much quicker than we were actually prepared. And this uh, is this is sort of this is sort of good news. And inshallah. Uh, we will see a better digital Pakistan in in uh, in a shorter time frame, and hopefully we will be able to address uh, our e-commerce policy issues. We should come out with our e-commerce policy as early as possible. Some are, uh, some uh, uh, medical experts are uh, predicting that as summer approaches and uh, we see heat, uh, you know, uh, temperatures going up. But Perhaps this would also, but I'm not too sure. I, I as I was looking at it globally, um, I could see that even in those places like Saudi Arabia, where the temperatures are high, it's still hitting them. It it's still hitting them hard. Um, I I was looking at uh, J.P. Morgan's uh, um, uh, report that they have uh, released uh, a few days back, and they are already witnessing. Uh, a downward dip of around uh, 30 percent, and that's that's uh, quite significant. They are also seeing, um, you know, retail marketing markets going down by about 18 to 25 percent, depending on which part of Pakistan we are. In Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, we have seen uh, a dip of around 10 to 20, 10 to 18 percent, depending on on the uh, on the retail market. So overall, aggregate demand is going to reduce. Uh, this perhaps would have an impact on the overall supply chain because if the demand reduces, the supply also eventually reduces. And then when the supply reduces, the, the manufacturing industry, which is the back end of the entire supply chain, also suffers. So uh, I hope uh, this, uh, this would uh, 
not disturb the overall ecosystem in pakistan we have already opened uh, several sectors uh, uh, we are am part of that committee uh, working with tdap which is now working on seamless uh, export orders if if an industry has a confirms uh, uh, Hassan, sir, i think i think we we will come come to that because you have covered a lot of areas right now as we speak and uh, let's try to get into the the details of the different areas and you rightly picked up uh, let's start with the with the overall global trade trend uh if we go with the imf right now they are predicting that 2020 uh is going to be like a negative 3% growth globally and we can see all the regions except china which is going to be red that's been they are below uh, they are they are in a negative growth rate mode and that has got its implication on a global trade and the global trade is a one where uh, most of the supply chain is working right now whether it's coming from china or even coming a small portion from pakistan so how do you see uh, right now under the covid we can understand there is a certain restrictions and the the global trade is very restricted to the essential goods but let's say we the generally the the expectation is that post june we will start seeing a certain recovery mode so how do you see the role of pakistan uh, under the current scenario where we stand in terms of the global trade right now as per as per the uh, recent study that planning commission has conducted uh we might see uh, about uh, impact of around 1.3 trillion rupees uh, to our uh, economy and this these assumptions are again as i said are based on the fact that by uh, by august a one scenario is for august that we should be uh, able to find vaccine for this uh, covid 19 and the scenario 2 is based on uh the timelines of uh, december as uh, as a date where we can find the uh, cure for this vaccine beyond that nobody is really willing to predict at this point of time so based on scenario a they predict that around 1.3 to uh, 1.1 to 1.3 trillion rupees impact on our economy and also uh um, we are also seeing an incremental impact already in provincial economy that's based on the uh, post 18 amendment uh, discussion and debate that we had now looking at pakistan in the overall global supply chain i i i think first of all let's look at some certain sectors uh, within pakistan and then i'll speak answer your question last if we look at pharmaceutical industry which is the major industry that concerns covid 19 uh for next three months the supply chain perhaps for next two months uh march and april the supply chain uh, should not be disrupted as much as perhaps we are considering but if the overall if we see a research uh, in in the covid cases in china perhaps that case three months from today as we speak the the situation my version for those pharmaceutical industry uh, sectors where the import uh, raw from material is from china so this is this is something that should concern us at this point and we should hope that we do not see a surge surge in in cases in china we are already seeing that china is bouncing up fast their industries is are opening up they they are looking at uh, various uh, regulations uh, uh, and regulatory frameworks for for work at uh, at their respective ports and airports and if that uh, is uh, being addressed we would see a kick off uh, of their uh, industrial activity and already imf perhaps has and the world bank is looking at uh, uh, a surge in their numbers uh, gdp wise uh, going forward from here so if china picks up soon we will see relevance of pakistan and pakistan picking up soon because a lot of import come from china our trade sector and also uh, some of the other areas are hit uh, also in in terms of agriculture pakistan can benefit from this and as china recovers and there is a demand of food supplies in china we can immediately look at our borders at uh, uh at gilgit and um, and open that on 24/7 and try to uh, export uh, because perhaps because of 
not these unseasonal rain but overall agriculture is expected to do well uh, this year uh, we are expecting a good wheat crop and and that would of course uh, be important for our overall uh, food supplies uh with this uh, also uh, as far as trading is concerned and i'm still talking about inbound trade and then later little i will i will take a minute for for the picture globally for inbound trade uh, the the incentive package that state bank has just announced and the government uh, is sas program perhaps would address uh, some uh, some uh, micro and macro concerns and then moving forward uh we can uh, address i have spoken to some of the uh, large industry leaders and they think that they have the capacity to uh, to take the take the heat of covid 19 till perhaps end april and then beyond they would surely need uh, um, policy incentives coming from uh, the government and some relief packages flowing in in a, in large scale so far sars program is the only one that is working beside the state bank policy now again coming up globally i think uh, europe uh, where our exports uh, go we would see uh, uh, reduction in demand uh, in the overall aggregate demand especially textile sector will again be hit uh, because of that but uh, i i think if we can diversify our uh, textile sector and you know shape it to move towards uh, towards uh, the global uh, demands for masks and other epes i think that sector can recover very fast and already i'm seeing in faisalabad in sialkot and some other yeah, areas uh, they are they are working to diversify one big opportunity as an investment expert and also working in an investment attraction agency i i see that uh, countries would now look at diversification in terms of their businesses in china i'm talking about multinational enterprises and when they look at uh, diversification i think uh, first that first uh, site that comes to my mind uh, to their mind i think perhaps would be vietnam followed by bangladesh and perhaps it, if pakistan plays well all its card uh, the third spot can go to pakistan or maybe the fourth spot followed by malaysia or indonesia so for that i think we need to sit together look at our e-commerce policy uh, get the uh, get all uh, business leaders and exporters together with the leadership from coming from the commerce ministry and industry ministry and i think this is this is one uh, one positive that we can immediately immediately uh, you know gear up our, uh, gear ourselves up for that lastly the biggest uh, positive that i see uh, from this is is the environment and i was speaking to another forum and i said already i see many roses and new flowers uh, coming out in islamabad and in peshawar as we enter so perhaps environment uh, and uh, nature mother nature is is smiling at this time looking at uh, how the environment is shaping up So th- thank you so I, th- i think you picked up rightly on a global trade perspective there will be certain disruptions we are seeing uh people are looking to become a part or partner with china somehow one way or other and most of the people are looking forward that the the upcoming middle class within the china is also will be one of a key driver for imports for china and then uh, there are certain partners which can play a role but when we are talking about these opportunity i'll bring it back to and you rightly picked up when uh, multinationals are looking for diversification they are looking for other countries and the vietnam is definitely uh, there bangladesh india even for that matter there the korea is also looking for some of the industry which they might move to india uh now what does it take like when we talk about pakistan there are certain views why organization should or should not look at pakistan as a one of a opportunity once they are diversifying their uh, investment from china so what do you think we have and what do you think we don't have to attract those investor in a very quick one uh, 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 like uh, briefly if you can comment on what we have and what we don't have so we can work towards that to bring those industries to pakistan i think we have a uh, huge potential as far as uh, english speaking hard working middle class uh, and uh, low middle class is concerned you know if you look at literature 
uh, about pandemics and global catastrophes you would find that at the end it is always the middle class because of their ability yeah. of hard work because of their ability to learn and uh, seek more knowledge and opportunities brings them out uh, as uh, as bigger winners of uh, of a pandemic or a catastrophe like this so we have uh, we have so uh, thank you good, speaking middle class is one middle class i i'm speaking of human resource which can speak english because when we speak of e-commerce which will be the trend in coming uh, years you need uh, human resource which can speak global language and with, with your with our potential of speaking english uh, I, i think this is biggest advantage we have the other is our our advantage as far as uh, agriculture sector is concerned with a country which is which is food sufficient in a pandemic like situation we can look at various policies we can look at various incentives as long as our 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 food is insured and uh, assured so this is this is my this is my uh, second uh, biggest uh, achiever as far as uh, uh, the the third uh, perhaps uh, is uh, bringing pakistan and and that's uh, largely because of the leadership of prime minister imran khan bringing pakistan as a global leader of the developing world so with this you know a uh, third advantage that we have perhaps we can bring out uh, um, policies at a global level which will favor developing countries in terms of their share overall share in the global economy but then we also have to learn from countries which are our competitors like bangladesh uh, like perhaps vietnam perhaps like malaysia and how fast they are uh, uh, you know bringing up new Uh, incentive packages and we must uh, as we speak uh, even yesterday perhaps bring out incentive packages which are better competitive with the rest of our uh, with rest of the regional players the other thing that we need to look at in terms of uh, uh, you know benefiting our economy is asean see uh, the the fact and this is i have been the biggest proponent and and advocate of this that i do not see in a post pandemic pre pandemic or during pandemic uh, i still see china as the factory of the world at least till 2050 and a little beyond unless they find a better uh, factory producing uh, you know at a scale which where china produces i do not see vietnam actually catching up to china not neither in india so with that in mind uh, uh, with our uh, you know strategic alliance and also now through cpec the economic and trade alliance that are coming the new policies that are uh, new initiatives that are being undertaken because of cpec and the industrial cooperation i i see pakistan can benefit far more and far faster then uh, rest of the regional players is concerned we also have to link with asean besides uh, linking ourselves so it has to be a uh, tripartite sort of a framework where asean can be one and then uh, china and and pakistan uh, playing its its part so this these are my takeaways from from uh, the possibilities that we have so if we talk about then you talked about that we have got a good bit, like a large number of middle class which is english speaking the food supply pakistan could get take a role as a as a leader in a, within the developing country uh and then you are talking about the incentive packages which we might bring out uh, which will be better than uh, than the competition we are looking at and you also talked about the new relationship or a new partners which we should be building uh, uh in asean side as well as we should continue looking at china as a one of a factory for the as a as a factory of the globe uh now when we when we talk about that these opportunities been there for a while so covid definitely that's a, it's it's a disruption which might be bringing things uh, a little earlier or faster which is ko shayad jaldi leke aa jaye jo hum aaj se expect kar rahe the aaj se 10 se 15 saal pehle baad mein hoga wo shayad usse bahut bahut pehle hame nazar aa raha hai अगर हम उस सिनेरियो को देखें तो उसके लिए एक 
कि गवर्नमेंट की पॉलिसी गवर्नमेंट की एजिलिटी डू यू थिंक कि गवर्नमेंट की साइड पे जर्नल जब हम बात करते हैं तो वहां पे इस तरह की एजिलिटी अवेलेबल है एंड आई टेक वेरी स्पेसिफिक एग्जांपल रिसेंटली स्टेट बैंक ने एक बहुत अच्छे वेल इंटेंडेड पैकेजेस ऑफर किए हैं इस वक्त वेज सिक्योर करने के लिए वेजेस के लिए भी और एज वेल एज बिजनेस को अदरवाइज लेकिन उसमें जो फंडामेंटल सिक्योरिटी की रिक्वायरमेंट और जो हमेशा से एक चैलेंज रहा हुआ है एस का और इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर का वो वो चैलेंज वहां का वहीं पे खड़ा है सो so उसमें वो लोग जो हैं वो स्टिल दे कैन नॉट बी वेरी वेरी इंक्लूसिव जब हम एक डिस्ट्रप्शन की बात कर रहे हैं डू यू थिंक कि गवर्नमेंट इज रेडी फ्रॉम अ पॉलिसी मेकर परस्पेक्टिव एंड आर बिजनेस एज अ रिस्पॉन्स टू दैट अपॉर्चुनिटी आर रेडी टू टेक दैट इंक्लूसिव अप्रोच एंड रियली वर्क इन दैट एजिलिटी it's a it's a very pertinent question i i i think as a student of leadership i believe that uh, only those leadership models will survive which will ha- have agility which will have benevolence and which will have empathy in their approach and when i say leadership it does not mean that the political leadership only but also enterprises leadership because enterprises which only have agility and their leadership has benevolence and empathy looking at their employees uh, and not just uh, the 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 numbers uh, perhaps uh, that is uh, that is the name of the game i am not to sure what the new normal would be but in any scenario of uh, normal normalcy we'll see that uh, the policy formulation should be based on empathy and if we base that on empathy we will find that we will give incentives we will give new policy initiatives where the sme sector and also the cottage industry should benefit you know even if you look at china's early 80s you would see it was the yep. the sme sector and the cottage industry which actually lifted the larger uh, state owned enterprises which are uh, you know uh, quite famous and uh, grand at the global canvas so we need to i think uh, look at them uh, when i was working uh, with my team on the industrial policy in khyber pakhtunkhwa and this is before pandemic hit us uh, this these uh, uh, you know like collaterals uh, and also uh, securities was one one of the issues that were highlighted especially in newly merged districts where uh, you know um, uh, the land holding is basically with the with the tribe not just one person so so i i think uh, the government uh, will uh, address and this is where the role of the business chamber comes out in front i am not seeing them playing the kind of role they're asking for uh, far too many things instead of focusing on on the sectors where we can benefit where we can jump start fast because government uh, policy maker look at these chambers and business councils for their input and data so if the data uh, and if you give them the right kind of data and right kind of uh, policy requirements then only the the governments are able to make informed decision unless the government is not making the informed decisions any initiative would fail in, in short and long term so i i think uh, the only uh, you're right in what you're saying that we should have a uh, uh, better look at the policy uh, policies that we are giving and also the incentives that we are offering but i would also urge upon business chambers and uh, uh, i know that many accm members are are part of those business chambers to to come forward bring out their own research based on data are uh, and uh, research work and then uh, forward that data to the government for a better decision making which is not happening now i believe yeah the i think uh, situation from a data availability perspective is improving but uh, definitely uh, how we really put that in sight and use it in a policy uh, that's still a big question how government really adopt or adapt to that uh, digital mediums and the data uh we are hoping it would be but uh, it's it's a very gradual process given the covid-19 situation we expect that it should be much more accelerated now coming back to uh, a very specific question and then uske baad hum log definitely kpk ki investment policy pe bhi baat karenge lekin isse pehle i would just like to pick up 
ऑन वन ऑफ माई अर्लियर कन्वर्सेशन हमारे पास एक बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग फाइंडिंग थी कि कन्वेंशनल विजडम इज नॉट Not working anymore, but the fundamental principles still hold true. So, आज भी जैसे अभी आपने भी बात की empathy की, inclusivity की, integrity की, uh, innovation की. So these things still hold true. Although कि अगर हम conventional wisdom से इस problem को solve करने की बात करेंगे तो शायद uh, हमारे पास कोई immediate solution या हमें कोई रास्ता भी नजर नहीं आता. अब जब हम इन चीजों की बात करते हैं जहाँ पे हम word integrity या ethics use करते हैं, जहाँ पे हम innovation use करते हैं, हम empathy use करते हैं. या हम इंक्लूजन यूज करते हैं तो ये सारे अल्फाज जो हैं ये बिजनेस से रिलेटेड नहीं है ये एक फर्ड से रिलेटेड है उसकी सोच से रिलेटेड है एक माइंडसेट से रिलेटेड है सो so, अगर हम एज अ सोसाइटी और एज अ नेशन हम ये गुफ्तु कर रहे हैं कि कन्वेंशनल विजडम इज नॉट गोना वर्क बट द प्रिंसिपल अराउंड द इंटेग्रिटी एथिक्स इंक्लूजन और एम्पथी और ओवरऑल इनोवेशन दैट इज गोना बी अ गाइडिंग कोड फॉर आस सो डू यू सी कोविड नाइनटीन में हम ये गुफ्तु तो जरूर कर रहे हैं लेकिन एक आम आदमी के हवाले से क्या वो इन चीजों को रिकग्नाइज कर पा रहा है कि अगर उसने ग्लोबल कम्युनिटी का पार्ट बनना है ग्लोबल जी डी पी का पार्ट बनना है ग्लोबल वैल्यू चेन का पार्ट करना है तो उसको अपने किरदार में भी कुछ चीजें लेके आनी पड़ेंगी ताकि वो उन कम्युनिटीज के साथ काम कर सके जिनका किरदार शायद अब से थोड़ा सा फर्क हो गया हुआ है हम वो ट्रस्ट गेन कर सकें जिसकी बेस पे ये सारे रिलेशनशिप जैसे आपने आसियान की भी बात की या चाइना के साथ भी अगर हमने पार्टनर बनना है तो उसमें एक ट्रस्ट का एलिमेंट बहुत जरूरी है और वो ट्रस्ट जो है वो एक फर्ड ने क्रिएट करना है अपने किरदार के साथ और उसने जो चीज उनसे कमेंट करनी है उसने वो डिलीवर करनी है सो so, मैं इस साइड पे आपका एक एक व्यू चाहूंगा कि हाउ यू सी कि क्या हमारे अफराध कोविड नाइन्टीन की इस अपॉर्चुनिटी पे बात जो कर रहे हैं तो क्या वो किरदार में वो चेंज लाने के लिए तैयार है देखिए सजीद अगेन अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कशन एंड वी कैन हैव अ सेमिनार ऑन दिस आई एम आई एम अ प्रोपोनेंट ऑफ अ लीडरशिप मॉडल व्हिच इज मोर टॉप डाउन एज अपोज टू बॉटम अप ओके इन अ टॉप डाउन मॉडल आई आई थिंक द फर्स्ट डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ एथिक्स एंड बिजनेस सेंस एंड वट एवर दैट यू जस्ट रेफर टू हैज टू स्टेम फ्रॉम द लीडरशिप and again leadership as i said cannot be only uh, just the political leadership but also academic leadership also enterprise leadership and the society uh, leadership ngos and all when you would see your leader emulating and following good best practices they would also follow best practices uh, you been to china i have been there for For large part of my professional career, uh, you, you know the government gives policy, and its implementation remains at an operational level. The leadership, uh, perhaps Xi Jinping, can only look at policies and based on informed decision can give policies, and then later at the operational level, everybody ensures uh, that. Uh, the problem which i see in pakistan and this has nothing to do with pandemic or the the situation that we are in now is that at uh, perhaps at we believe more on individualism rather than collectivism and that is where china is better than most of most of the developing world if we look at our own individual gains and our abilities perhaps we will never reach the end state we, which you are referring to and which we all want to be so i think we should look at collectivism as as a whole within our society if it's a global uh, climate change if it's uh, our economy our ethics social norms uh, our uh, our religious norms i i think we will we will reach there faster you know just we can't blame pandemic or uh, say that uh, you know pandemic is the reason for the slow down as far as our social growth is concerned i think we should look at we should look at our society at large this debate should uh, this business debate uh, should happen and i am so happy and when i engage with acca i see that ethics and correct business practices remain forefront in your Uh, in your uh, you know uh, academic uh, syllabi so this should be now at the forefront you know the 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 sector that we represent you represent and you perhaps most of the participants represent are the one which will be the engine of this growth 
if we will follow the right ethics uh, environment approaches overall the economy the social fabric will improve we must look at in our policy formulation we must look at maslow's uh, hierarchy of leadership uh, you know of the society and look at each segment of the society as it is you just can't make an uh, one size fit of uh, all ethical and business policies and then expect the lower class to to uh, to look at them in the way that you are looking at them they look at their first requirement would remain food perhaps and and shelter before they talk of security and e- economics and perhaps uh, um, other and they look at the world i'm i'm talking about when they look up towards their leadership they look at look at them uh, for empathy so this is how we should be if we follow best practices we don't have to look around too much i mean if you just look at asean we look at uh, china uh, and some of the other developing countries which are developing fast look at vietnam perhaps and bangladesh we can easily we can easily uh, come up to the state and uh, where we all want to be last point that i would urge all policy makers and uh, and and your team and all your participant is that when they look at policies in within their enterprise now please look at your uh, your employees benefit first if you give them the right kind of benefits if you look after their just requirements i think your enterprise can can come up to the standard where uh, to a global standard and similarly if if the government uh, looks at policies which are more friendlier to the lower segment of the society i think our society can Um, kick start the way that at least all of us want no thank you thank you asim sab and i love the idea the top down approach i think that's a that's a way to go and uh, particularly uh, definitely our social fiber need that restructuring but now with the covid where the economic incentive is there to to become more trustworthy partners with the different and the, maybe a new partners there globally as a part of the value chain so definitely I, i i would suggest that even the people who are listening to us right now our students and members uh encourage the leadership to understand the value of trust and trust is the best business model ethics and morality right now is going to be the best business model if we want to become a part of the global value mm-hmm. chain and this disruption is happening so there is a big incentive uh to follow through that integrity and uh, really create a business model out of it particularly on in this digital world and hasan sab i'll pick up some of the question i got uh, from the audience as well so i'll uh, pick a question and uh, uh, you can you can talk about it whether it's uh, very relevant for you or we can uh, uh, look otherwise uh, you are a part of the investment and trade board in kpk and uh, if we talk about we can see a significant reduction in the oil prices uh, in a recent past how do you see that oil prices going to impact pakistan in general and is there any specific uh, initiative within kpk to encourage investment based on that oil price reduction do we see any any particular industry which can take benefit out of it i i, I think uh, uh, the uh, we were already working on with kp ogcl uh in terms of uh, oil exploration work i'm not too sure in the in the current scenario that would be uh, a beneficiary or not but overall the price going down would help the government to take certain initiatives and especially in the socio economic uh, development or development of the less developed areas of pakistan especially in kpk i think southern punjab and also uh the entire uh, uh, balochistan uh if we uh, and you know the money that they save because of the uh, lord uh, oil prices they can the government can invest on social development like education and healthcare so this is Wait. one uh, take away the other the other uh, thing I, i i i guess perhaps in in khyber pakhtunkhwa we are looking at uh, we were already looking at hydel as our resource for our economic zones and you know providing them with uh, with certain uh, requirement of electricity perhaps around 100 to 150 megawatt 
through our chitral cascade and uh, because khyber uh, pakhtunkhwa is blessed with large reservoir of water i i think we can also i'm all, although i'm deviating from your question because i am not a big big supporter of uh, fossil fuel so okay. i will try to i will try to move my answer towards uh, alternative uh, energy where we can look at more now at uh, at solar at hydel and also at other forms of energy so that our industry uh supplies can uh, energy supplies can be met and for me i think the biggest takeaway uh in the current scenario not not 6 months from now but as of today i think the government can save money which they can actually invest in social socio economic development this also gives us about 6 months of time in which we can also invest in our vocational training because i feel that our vocational training especially in digital uh, world that we will soon be entering uh, we lack uh, competitiveness as far as uh, uh, you know skill labor is concerned so perhaps this gives us a, uh, you know a time of about 6 to 8 months where we can undertake uh, it based online vocational training for large segment of the society through perhaps television through perhaps radio and also through uh, internet and uh, you know brace ourselves or gear ourselves for uh, for the fast uh, developing age one uh, aspect that we missed uh, in our discussions sajid and I'm, i know that you are a big uh, a keen uh, follower of a 5g activities happening yeah. around the globe and i think uh, if that happens as far as fast as perhaps china is looking at it we must also find our relevance in the supply chain of it yeah. equipment and we have the we have the uh, basic uh, skills we just need to harness that through vocational training and that can easily happen through online distance uh, learning ek cheez jo main last question se aapke bhul gaya tha and now that we have discussed on uh, uh, you know distant teams and uh, वर्चुअल टीम्स आई थिंक उस केस में भी जो चूंकि उनका फेस टू फेस इंटरेक्शन नहीं होता अपनी इंटरप्राइज लीडरशिप के साथ तो आई वुड अर्ज अपॉन द एंटरप्राइज लीडर्स हु आर हेयर एंड आल्सो दैट यू मीट प्लीज अर्ज देम टू रिमेन यू नो डेमोन्स्ट्रेट एम्पथी एंड कंसर्न फॉर वर्चुअल टीम्स ऑल्सो बिकॉज वेन दे आर फार वो कहते हैं ना नजर ओजल पहाड़ ओजल तो उस लिहाज से यू डू नॉट एक्चुअली शो द काइंड ऑफ कंसर्न फॉर teams that work with you under the same uh, roof so that is also one area i think our our new emerging leadership at enterprise level should look at no i think uh, the, thank you asan sir i think you picked up two points which are very close to my heart uh, one is the people who are working remotely using it and it enabled uh, tools to really connect them with the with the, with the people as well as with the job across the border or within the same country and the second 5g i think covid 19 i truly believe that the covid 19 ha- has uh, created a more user use cases or a business sense uh, to implement 5g earlier uh, whatever the initial plan was and that's create a more user case for uh, use cases for it and secondly you rightly picked up uh, uh, and that's a advice which acc kept bringing out ke apna ye time when you are in a lockdown you might saving time on the travel because a lot of people are not saving time in term of the work because of their nature of the work they might be connected and working but definitely you save time in term of travel and some other activities use that time to upskill yourself the life is not going to be the same ye bahut zyada changes aayengi life mein aur bahut se naye skills aur opportunities jo hain wo future mein aapke paas nayi opportunities aa rahi hongi jiske liye different requirements aayengi skill ki aur jispe it or it enabled skills are the important ones and also i i definitely agree with you ke is waqt hamare paas opportunity hai to partner maybe with china and start looking at the hardware side of it jahan pe 5g or 5g se related equipment or appliances jo hain wo pakistan mein manufacture kiye ja sake so that's bring me to another question and uh, uh, an interesting one uh, and that may not be relevant for your current role but i'm sure it is impact on cpac and the way forward covid 19 is there any change on cpac and the the role of pakistan and the development or the progress we were making on cpac earlier okay uh, 
the few things that we were supposed to do with or without cpec and with or without covid first a was improve our business practices b look at new business models and joint ventures or yahan par acca and perhaps uh, other similar agencies which are looking at bringing fostering uh, uh, new uh, business uh, you know uh, joint ventures can look at uh, b is to look at new models and also new joint ventures that are happening and try to become relevant to to that not in terms of if you are a large scale enterprise then perhaps as a as a partner and if you are not that large then perhaps in part of the supply chain c is to look at our education and vocational training and improve that coming up to at least the regional level we are far behind even as far as the region is concerned what to talk of the of the uh, developed uh, world so d is to do and that's also on part of the uh, on part of the uh, uh, leadership at uh, hcc and also on part of other academic institution is to to set up uh, centers which can do hand holding of their you know students in terms of uh, building up their ability to enter the global market please do not prepare students and professionals for for domestic markets prepare them for global markets if you prepare them for that global market i think uh, they will be able to uh, you know brace the challenge of uh, of uh, new technology that is coming in Im- improve their communication skills i said in in the interview boards of many uh, many enterprises and also g- some government Uh, agencies also uh, uh, in uh, related to cpac for last four years i i used i go in almost all seminars related to bri and cpac and i see one difference is in our human resource also besides technology is their communication skills so i think this is also an area where we we need to develop jahan tak sawal cpac ka hai because cpac ke jo infrastructure projects the they were about 6 months ahead of time so we i do not see any any lag as far as uh, you know impact of covid is concerned but i would also like to urge at this point that policy makers of uh, cpac should look at finding new methods of uh, connecting to the r&d of china if we can connect our academic institutions our business institutions and also uh connecting them with with chinese through the cpac uh, consortiums and uh, whatever structure that they can work on i think data is going to be data data and knowledge is going to be the biggest uh, player or the key pillar as far as developing world is concerned aur agar hum jitni jaldi cpac ke through chinese r and d structure ke andar ghus jaye इंडस्ट्रियल स्ट्रक्चर में हम ऑटोमेटिकली घुस जाएंगे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर में हमें उनसे सीखना है आई थिंक आई बट दिस विल हैपन इंक्रीमेंटली एंड आई 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 रिमेंबर डेंट शॉपिंग सेइंग दैट इट डज नॉट मैटर हाउ फास्ट यू आर मूविंग एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर मूविंग सो इफ यू मूव इन दैट डायरेक्शन आर एंड डी को पकड़े नेक्स्ट फेज शुड बी इंडस्ट्री एंड आर एंड डी लेट्स नॉट टॉक अबाउट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर लेट्स डू इट through our own resources let's use our psdps and adps and public private partnership models for developing our infrastructure i went to north korea once upon a time and i was this is 2009 where i went for a conference way back and i was you know astonished to see their infrastructure look at their economy and look at their infrastructure so i think the the government should look at its own resources for and especially the ppp models for for uh, developing infrastructure especially use uh, looking at possibilities of uh, ppp in also in alternative sources of energy like hydel and others perhaps in nuclear we still need uh, uh, our friends to support us and look at the developing models i always compare pakistan of today with china of uh, early 80s lot of lot of similarities but uh there were convergence as far as 
the desire to develop as a nation jab aapka as a nation ye desire aa jayega to fir aap khud hi apni industry ko bhi develop karenge apni society ko bhi develop karenge because you would like that pakistan should be respected as a nation and that that could be through their uh, you know uh, enterprise model or through their your industry model or through your agriculture sector model r and d se jab aap unse sikhenge quickly to aap agriculture mein sabse pehle r and d ko dekhein taaki aapki food basket grow kar sake jitna aapki apne apne एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर पे डिपेंडेंस बढ़ेगी आप कल को आपके पास सरप्लस होगा आप आज कहते हैं वी टॉक अबाउट एक्सपोर्टिंग एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट्स देयर इज एन एफटीए टू व्हिच वाज साइन विद चाइना एंड ऑलरेडी इट वाज इट केम ऑन इफेक्ट इन जनवरी सो इट्स ऑलरेडी मार्च नाउ एंड वी हैव अ ग्रेस पीरियड ऑफ अबाउट 5 ईयर इन दैट सो आई थिंक द यंग एंटरप्रेन्योर्स लिसनिंग टू अस एंड दोस हू मीट यू शुड लुक एट दैट एंड आई थिंक यू शुड इंक्लूड दैट इन योर in your informal discussion with the acca uh, structure and look at fta that we have signed with china because there is a huge uh, there is a huge possibility there but my point is r and d r and d r and d unless we get into chinese because i have seen chinese budget of r and d for peking university because i was attached with them and with uh, professor justin e fullin in in one of my research one of our research for cpec uh, industrial cooperation and the budget was phenomenal i think it was more than all public sector and uh, academian institution uh, that we have so i think if we can link with that it can be with starting with agriculture and then industry i think we can we can and be part of the chinese supply chain they need a lot of import they are already importing goods yeah. worth around 2.2.2 2 trillion us dollars so if we can we can be part of that leverage our uh, cpec uh, highways uh, you know connecting ka you know kashgar with uh, with gwadar if we leverage that well which inshallah will be completed by end of this year uh, inshallah i i think uh, cpec is there to support and cpec and bri in the connectivity that it brings in terms of knowledge in terms of people to people interaction uh some people uh, globally and economists largely uh, predict that globalization will be impacted uh, because of uh, pandemic but i think uh, it it is because of globalization and that is that in in relation to bri i am saying i think globalization has taken large number of people out of poverty and i think we should look at it in that way we should share knowledge we should share uh good practices in terms of globalization bring in a go- global mar- uh, market which is based on global ethics and i i i think we can we can really benefit from cpec no, no, thank you asan sir i think you 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 are sharing a, a, a very optimistic view when we talk about china and uh, i share that optimism as well pakistan man unfortunately when we take it back to the sme sector or businesses they are not very confident uh, around what their role will be in the cpac and they are still waiting for the government to bring more information um then normally as from a acca platform we encourage them hamara mission to ye hota hai ki bhai aap ek step aage badho aap china jao partnership karo there is a certain incentive agar is sari connectivity ka agar benefit pakistan ka businessman nahi le raha hoga to definitely koi aur businesses buyers se aayenge aur wo isko as a hub use karenge aur us waqt hum kahenge ki ye opportunity to sari hamari thi but somehow hame government ne nahi bataya ya policies is tarah nahi thi lekin entrepreneur by default uh, is a person jo ke initiative lete hai aage badhte hai aur wo chaos mein se bhi opportunity generate karta hai and that's what the kind of optimism you share always about china and i totally agree around the r&d like this is a one of a area which we might not have very strong a uh, footing as we speak today whether we talk about the academic uh, research or we talk about the industrial research or we talk about the combination of both so i think that's definitely a one of a message we should carry out forward that uh, research is a important area and we come to that ek cheez jo aapne badi achhi baat ki darmiyan mein and that's again something which we we propagate a lot agar hum is pure chain ka part banne again agar humne is globalization jis pe different questions different opinions ho sakti hain lekin globalization is going to stay there it's not going to go away in another like 50 60 70 years the way we foresee it 
कुछ लिमिटेशन आ सकती है कहीं पे लेकिन सिग्निफिकेंटली ग्लोबलाइजेशन और ग्लोबल ट्रेड इज गोइंग टू बी देर एंड ग्लोबल पार्टनरशिप एंड ग्लोबल रिलेशनशिप आर गोइंग टू बी देर सो जो आपने अभी बात की एथिक्स की आई थिंक अगेन आई ब्रिंग इट बैक एंड दे इज अनदर कॉमेंट आई सो ऑन फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस साइड इट्स माइंड सेट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट वर्किंग फ्रॉम होम वी टॉक अबाउट क्रास्ट वी टॉक अबाउट इंटेग्रिटी तो इट्स नॉट द मैटर कि किसी ने आके हमने हमें उस पर स्पेसिफिक ट्रेनिंग देनी है ये हमारा आज का डिसीजन हो सकता है कि कल से जब हमने काम करना है तो वी हैव टू मेक श्योर कि हम उसको एथिकली करें और हम उस पर ट्रस्ट मेंटेन करें ताकि वो रिलेशनशिप उस ट्रस्ट पे बेस करता हो अब इसमें एक और क्वेश्चन जो मेरे पास आ रहा है दैट मोर रिलेटेड विद एक्सटर्नल डेट रीपेमेंट रिलीफ बहुत रिसेंटली पाकिस्तान को बट आई नो दैट इट्स अ फेडरल गवर्नमेंट सब्जेक्ट इफ यू लुक एट दैट वे uh but we are seeing a certain impact and the responses from the businesses uh, uh within pakistan jahan pe jab external debt ki deferment ki baat aayi aur interest rate niche aaya to stock market ne ek immediate response diya hai uh do you think uh, while i'm sure there is a certain uh, investment incentive for people if the interest rate is going down do you see right now ki aapki jo pipeline hai investors ki within kpk they are looking at as a positive any news which or any feedback you are hearing about these two things uh, within kpk dekhiye ek main simple example deta hu <clears throat> and uh, this is based on kpk and then later we'll talk about certain other things that have just come to my mind there are about 27 uh, special economic zone within the belt and road initiative and the only two that are being uh, you know undertaking in a public private partnership where chinese are investing one is in kpk and other is in azerbaijan so just look at the importance that china is giving to khyber pakhtunkhwa and also my uh, you know professional uh, migration from cpac to khyber pakhtunkhwa was based on the conviction that in future and that would largely also depend on our border management at uh, at torham and uh, other borders that we are looking at and i am also working on the trade policy for khyber pakhtunkhwa we are looking at at least three sites where we can uh, set up good modern border management system and Im- increase the the number of uh, trade flows from there both inbound and outbound so if we can manage our borders with afghanistan and then that leads us to special uh, the the and and the overall geo uh, political scenario that is developing in and around afghanistan favors khyber pakhtunkhwa at a much larger size or numbers and also in in terms of geo politics than any other uh, province of uh, pakistan perhaps a little bit uh, gilgit baltistan also so if we can leverage that well we can if we can leverage our national uh, uh, natural endowment well based on agriculture based on vast land that is there in newly merged district and hard working human resource hard working human resource not that uh, you know educated but hard working human resource which is employed across middle east also and in pakistan wherever you work on infrastructure projects so if we can work on our infrastructure road connectivity we are working on di khan pishar we are working on uh, uh, gilgit chitral shandur Chit- and chakdara highway as an alternative to uh, to kkh and if we can uh, you know improve and i'm 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 not so uh, happy to state this the current state of infrastructure with our borders so if we can build and as the chinese say if you want to become rich build roads if we can build roads better roads which can undertake large size uh, uh, you know uh, container cargo i i think we uh, cpac we i'm already seeing ffc taking a lot of interest in in uh, khyber pakhtunkhwa for uh, some uh, some of their new diversification happening i'm also seeing a lot of uh, uh, new uh, uh, businesses coming up in in near future we have we have seen uh, I, i think a wall coming in 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 front of us because of pandemic in terms of our speed but i think uh, 
we will see more inclusive development with these roads coming up in next uh, six to eight months. Uh, now coming back again to uh, to the point of overall economy and in investment, I think this is the right time that our federal BOI should sit with all the provincial board of investments and relevant body and industries, commerce naturally, and also do a, a complete digital huddle with uh, our uh, uh, commercial counselors globally. Fine, uh, and Minister of Foreign Affairs can play its role. Look at areas where the investors are keen to invest because investment will, will happen. People will look at diversification. People have money and they want to spend. I think this watch and see policy will remain for next two, three months. And then, inshallah, when, as we come out of this, uh, we will see a lot of investment coming from our uh, from Pakistanis who are investing abroad now and they would look at Pakistan because now we have realized that no place is better than your home ground. Uh, you know, when people are stuck at airport and, and in countries and cities across the globe with the air traffic not being there, they now realize, I guess they now realize that uh, there's no better place than your home, uh, home ground and, and your home. So they will come and invest, and I'm I'm trying. I've just asked my and team. Sir, I don't to work wait, on, like, uh, just lastly, I've asked my team to make a virtual investment guidebook for KP, and uh, this is how I think our investment attraction activities would also change because of COVID. No, no, thank thank you, sir, and, and I think I I totally agree and endorse that. Uh, the rate of return which we can see in Pakistan, uh, mm -hmm. given the population and the connectivity which we are looking forward to, that's uh, not available. Mm -hmm. the, the size of opportunity is not available. We are a, uh, whether we are a huge consumer not, market. We are a huge consumer market. And I think I also pick up on that and you rightly pick up uh, on, the, on the hard work as well. I think that's another uh, one of our great which Chinese have demonstrated over the period while the number of hours they spend in school or number of hours they spend working. I think the hard work is a one of, a, a, again, a trait uh, which we might be looking for going forward or even today. That's our social fiber. Uh, just by restructuring overdue hai. I'll again uh, go back to very fundamental. Our social fiber mein kuch restructuring is overdue. Hai. COVID-19 may be an opportunity to bring it forward right now. Sir, now I'm uh, May, it, 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 before, before you move forward, you know, I teach in several universities, I teach projects management. I, I think kabhi -kabhi hum, uh, uh, academia ka or faculty ka jo role hai, usko underplay kar dete hain. Aur wo khud bhi underplay karte hain because ek to ye ke hamari jo pattern hai, uh, I'm not talking about uh, the urban uh, universities, I'm talking about largely on rural universities, yeah, unke jo, uh, you know, points hai, uh, outside uh, urban centers. Unko, I, I, and I would urge ke aap apne, uh, you know, you have connections with uh, policy makers here. Unko convince karein ke uh, academia ko aur aapke baut saaron ke saath partnership bhi hai. Ke please industry ke saath apne aapko link karein. Main ek baut bada gulf dekhta hoon as far as the understanding of academia is as far as business, business practices are concerned. Uh, we look at Western models largely. I think we should be more introvert and look at our own business practices and try to bring. G. Nani, sir, please go ahead. Go ahead. G. And I think we have our own scheme. Conviction and I'm trying to bring this in Khayab Pakhtunkhwa, working with our uh, uh, minister and secretary industries. Uh, we have uh, all three of us are now convinced. We have set up a R&D structure in uh, in board of investment. Jo ye karega ke ham koshish karenge ke jo academia hai unka three to four months ka ek uh, you know extend karwaenge with industries. Maybe th these could be young. Uh, probably associate professors or assistant professors or otherwise your lower faculty members. 
उनको हम थ्री टू फोर मंथ्स के यू नो इंडस्ट्रीज में कराएंगे और वो इंडस्ट्रीज जो कि हमारी पिलर इंडस्ट्रीज हैं विद इन के पी सो दैट दे वेन दे आर वर्किंग स्पेशली इन मैनेजमेंट साइंसेज एंड ऑल्सो अदर साइंस अभी हमने इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी में भी इन्वॉल्व पिशार यूनिवर्सिटी एज वेल एज आई एम साइंसेज टू टू हेल्प अस यू नो डू मॉडलिंग फॉर आर पॉलिसी तो इस लिहाज से आई थिंक दिस इज वन एरिया वेर आई डो नॉट सी I'm not too happy with the, and I'm in my little modest uh, position. I'm not too happy to see the the way that our academians are looking at industry. थोड़ा सा उसमें हमें I think uh, business approach लाने की जरूरत नहीं सर बिल्कुल इसमें इसमें you are right. I think there is a certain connectivity between industry and academia. Uh, HEC has got a subcommittee as well, and now they are trying to create that one where they can have business people and uh, people from the academia sitting together and resolve or bring that research, like you mentioned. It's a gradual process. Again, it's uh, it's not as fast as we would like that to be. Uh, like it, it's a very important step. I think they have already taken that step, and we really appreciate that side. Or usme ACC ye bazaate khud to sari qualification se leke aur hamara to daily basis pe jo hai wo it's a feedback from the from the industry based on which the qualification or training design uh jis pe hum log sara base kar rahe hote hain globally sir isme main i'll just try to to create a scenario hum hamesha acc mein bhi aur worldwide bhi bahut zyada guftugu ho rahi thi future of the work and future of the workplace aur hum logo ka khayal tha aaj se 5 saal baad aise hoga ke people will have a fundamental characteristics or traits so which is may again trust is the one of a key element और लोग घरों से काम कर रहे होंगे मैं अपने घर बैठ के मैं यूरोप के लिए भी काम कर रहा हूँ मैं आसियान के लिए भी काम कर रहा हूँ आई नॉट बी एम्प्लॉयड मैं कहीं एम्प्लॉय नहीं होगा मैं जॉब नहीं कर रहा हूँ बल्कि जो जॉब्स हैं वो एडवर्टाइज होंगे और मैं उस पर कम्पीट कर रहा हूँ लेकिन आज के सीनैरियो अगर हम देखें तो हमें सम हाउ वो सारा पढ़ा लिखा तबका जो था उसके पास एक अपॉर्चुनिटी आई और ज्यादातर लोग इस वक्त घर से बैठ के काम कर रहे हैं अब अगर हम इस सिनेरियो को थोड़ा सा एक्स्ट्रा पोलेट करें कि पाकिस्तान की लेट से जो इस वक्त करंट वर्क फोर्स हम जब सेवेंटी मिलियन की बात करते हैं उसमें से आठ दस परसेंट जो वर्क फोर्स है दिस स्टार्ट मूविंग टू वर्ड्स दैट कि हम सात आठ मिलियन लोग जो हैं वो अगर इस साइड पे चलना शुरू कर देते हैं कि वो घर बैठ के और वो इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में और लोकल मार्केट में दिस स्टार्ट ऑफरिंग देयर सर्विस बेस्ड ऑन द एक्सपर्टीज और स्किल्स दे है हाउ डू यू सी आप सोसाइटी में क्या देख अगर इस तरह का जब बिहेवियर और वर्कफोर्स और फ्यूचर ऑफ द वर्क इवॉल्व होगा तो सोसाइटी में और क्या चेंजेस इसके साथ आ रही होंगे मैं कुछ एग्जांपल दूं दैट पीपल डोंट हैव टू ट्रैवल सो तो एक दूसरे से जाके मिलना नहीं है उस पर फेस टू फेस कन्वर्सेशन और एंगेजमेंट और कम हो जाएगी और दे माइट बी वर्किंग फ्रॉम अ होम व्हिच माइट क्रिएट एंजाइटी अदरवाइज जो कि आज के हम जैसे आपने शुरू में बात की थी कि ऑनर्स को एम्पति शो करनी है कि लोग जो घर से काम कर रहे हैं उनके हवाले से क्योंकि देर इज अ सर्टन एंगजाइटी सो अगर हम इस नॉर्म को देखें कि ये गोइंग फॉरवर्ड आज से छह माह साल के बाद ये बहुत ज्यादा अडॉप्ट हो जाएगा पाकिस्तान में और वर्कफोर्स मूव टूवर्ड्स दैट व्हाट चेंजेस इट विल ब्रिंग इन टर्म ऑफ आर 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 सोशल स्ट्रक्चर्स और इवन आर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर रिक्वायरमेंट रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ ऑफ वन ऑफ माय टीचर ऑफ so in in that respect every time especially and this is a uh, true if you read any uh, any developing structural economist uh, literature that is available and also look at uh, why nations fail as one of the one of the key literature that is discussed worldwide uh, i think each time that we look at a change we start to build our dreams around it and you know go to a euphorian state where everything ek jannat nazir nazara hamare samne aa jata hai ki you know everything would be perfect uske liye jo sabse important uh, attribute hota hai especially at time of change is the leadership skills that can be demonstrated by people at the uh, top of the ladder politically academically and elsewhere aur unhone ye change ko derive karna hota hai perhaps mother nature is making the kind of adjustment that it de- demands from us ab yahan par ab nature ne aake 
आपके एकेडमिक इंडस्ट्री बिजनेस प्रैक्टिसेस को तो नहीं चेंज करना ना वो तो हमने खुद करना है पेंडेमिक और नो पेंडेमिक हमने सिर्फ ये रियलाइज करना है कि टेक्नोलॉजी इज कमिंग वी आर लुकिंग एट एन एज वेयर देयर वुड बी अवतार्स वर्किंग दे वी वुड मे बी ओनिंग अ कार वुड बी अ टैबू आल्सो पीपल वुड लुक एट ऊबर एंड अदर रिसोर्सेज एंड बाय एंड डिमांड फॉर फॉर uh you know cars and clothes uh, that uh, the elite would like so us lihaz se i i think ke agar to ye scenario rehta hai till december uh, and beyond then we are looking at a new world i am not too sure i can't predict ke ye kaisa hoga but if it's if the cure is uh, is uh, is discovered and uh, we find that things are better in 6 months all we can expect and all we can do is to improve our ability and knowledge and this is individual uh, at, at an individual le- uh, level i am referring to this is what i am doing i am trying to accumulate more knowledge i am trying to uh, diversify my skill set and uh, that could be backed by my experience ek jo last cheez hame kisi bhi change mein leadership ko lani hai wo ye hai ke aur especially public sector mein dekhiye public sector jo hai na wo wo mentally tune hui hoti hai they are risk averse wo novel ideas aur innovation ko itna ek jaldi adopt nahi karte to i think jo public sector uh, organizations hain jisko main represent karta hu सबसे पहले हमें इनोवेशन एंड न्यू आइडियाज को अडॉप्ट करने की जरूरत है और ये अपने अंदर कैपेसिटी बिल्डअप करने की जरूरत है प्राइवेट सेक्टर में आई थिंक फ्रॉम अ सेट अप्रोच वी हैव टू बी मोर बी मोर बेनोवेलेंट इन आर इन आर स्ट्रेटेजी नॉट जस्ट लुक एट पर्सनल बेनिफिट बट लुक एट द बेनिफिट ऑफ द एंटरप्राइज इसी में मैं एक और भी रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि जो एंटरप्राइजेस हैं मीडियम लेवल एंटरप्राइजेस आई थिंक दे शुड आल्सो लुक एंड स्पेशली इन केपी एंड प्रोविंस स्मॉलर प्रोविंसेस शुड लुक एट लिस्टिंग देम सेल्फ विद स्टॉक एक्सचेंज उससे उनके बिजनेस प्रैक्टिसेस भी इंप्रूव हो जाएंगे तो आई 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 थिंक जब अच्छा और जब चीजें ठीक हो जाएंगी इफ द वर्ल्ड इज बैक टू इट्स न्यू नॉर्मल उसके भी छह महीने बाद थिंग्स विल अगेन बी एज दे आर टुडे आई कैन आई एम आई नो दैट बिकॉज इट्स ह्यूमन नेचर टू रिवर्ट बैक टू वट सूट्स दैम एंड अकोमोडेट्स दैम सो उसमें ये होगा कि उस छह महीने में फिर अगेन द लीडरशिप हैज टू डेमोन्स्ट्रेट एंड लुक एट हाउ कंटिन्यूटिविटी एंड ऑल्सो इंक्लूसिव डिवेलपमेंट इंक्लूसिव सस्टेनेबल डिवेलपमेंट वुड बी द की एंड दैट डिवेलपमेंट इज नॉट जस्ट development of the country but also enterprises and each one of us i think now no, thank you sir and uh, i think again your point around the leadership whether we have to lead ourselves or whether we have to lead our organization that is very very pertinent here uh, i'll pick up some questions uh, which are very industry specific i'll try to answer some of them and uh, i'll invite us in some wherever you would like uh, to uh, to add there's a one question which is related with uh what is the impact on the banking industry and uh, if i give uh, we had a recent session and uh, i'll pick up some of the findings from there so our banking system within pakistan is very well capitalized so we don't have a issue with the liquidity and availability of the liquidity for to handle what the crisis we are going right now the challenge is the ntl which we definitely non performing loans definitely we anticipate that it will go up uh in going forward we do anticipate that the the segment which is not banking in the banking circle or which is not a part of a documented economy might require liquidity and the liquidity may be available and which is definitely available but they might not be able to access it just because they are not part of that uh, formal economy or documentation right now and there will be a certain segment which may require document uh, liquidity like when we talk about the small wholesaler or retailer but they with the lack of security they might uh, 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 challenged in term of ki kya unko wo sare cash flow or credit lines or loans mil sakte hai yani so these are the questions jo ki state bank is trying to solve as well unhone kafi achhi ek intervention ki hui hai lekin zahir hai uske apne kuch practical aspects hain jisko dekha ja raha hai 
but as a whole banking industry is quite secure as we speak today and even if we are looking at the scenario till december uh, it's very well capitalized and uh, it has got a ample liquidity so we don't see much uh, impact other than the increase in uh, non performing loan uh, in a recent uh, upcoming areas there's another question around the garment industry and uh, i would go again based on our recent conversation and i'll invite uh, hasan sab you to add on that on a garment industry we are seeing some of the uh, global uh, uh, contract jo ke cancel ho rahe hain aur se pakistan mein nahi ho rahe globally ho rahe hain to uski ek direct aur indirect implication definitely garment sector ke upar bhi aayegi wahan pe bhi sales slow hongi loss of income agar main isko generalize karu तो जो किसी भी इंडस्ट्री के लिए सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट सिनेरियो है वो इस वक्त ये है कि कितनी लॉस ऑफ इनकम का उन्होंने फोकास्ट करनी है अगर कोई इंडस्ट्री या बिजनेस इस वक्त आके इस इसमें गुफ्तु करेगा कि वहां पे इंटायरली लॉस ऑफ इनकम नहीं है तो वो वो डिपेंड के वो किस सेक्टर में बैठा हुआ है लाइक इट सेटिंग इन डिजिटल वन डेफिनेटली हमने वहां पर एक सर्च देखा है फार्मा में थोड़ा सा सर्च आ रहा है बट uh, अगर आप जाए इन जर्नल आपके जो कन्वेंशनल बिजनेस मॉडल है वहां पे लॉस ऑफ इनकम इज वन ऑफ अनेरियो और उसमें इवेल्युएट करने का जो है सिलसिला वो ये है कि वो लॉस ऑफ इनकम कितना है सस्टेनेबल है और क्या उसके लिए कोई क्रेडिट लाइन या कैश फ्लो अवेलेबल है और यहाँ पे हमेशा हम इंकरेज करते हैं अकाउंटेंट्स को टेक अड अपने क्लाइंट्स को अपने इंप्लॉयर्स को गाइड करें गवर्नमेंट ने क्या रिलीफ पैकेजेस दिए हुए हैं क्या बिजनेस मॉडल में चेंजेस आ रही है एंड हाउ क्विकली Uh, वो बिजनेसेस अपने आप को उस इनोवेशन का पार्ट बना सकते हैं डू यू वांट टू ऐड समथिंग अराउंड इट नो आई थिंक बैंकिंग सेक्टर आई हैव अ स्मॉल रिक्वेस्ट टू द बैंकिंग सेक्टर इफ एनीवन वाज हियर और इफ यू कैन कन्वे टू देम आई थिंक दे शुड दे शुड बी विलिंग टू टेक लिटिल बिट मोर रिस्क रिस्क इन द करंट सिनेरियो एंड दोस banks which will take a little little risk perhaps would benefit the most at the end of the day and this is also for other businesses also as far as government i i think if the orders are being cancelled i think they should use that raw material in producing uh, uh ppe clothing and also uh, that is pers- uh, person protection equipment and clothing uh, diversify it medical uh, and healthcare i i did one small research when i was working on cpac and working on the textile industry us waqt humne identify kiya tha that if our entire textile industry provides bed linens to the hospital on the west western border of china i think they would still need uh, double of uh, they will get double uh, orders and also they would run over capacity so this is the kind of a uh, potential that the healthcare sector has and there's a increase in demand as far as P- uh, ppe and uh, other uh, textile related uh, medical you know linen uh, stuff is concerned so i think they should look at this and not be bogged down by the cancellation of order because overall as i said earlier aggregate demand of uh, products would reduce people will go and wait and see but i think this healthcare sector is one where there will be a surge an unprecedented surge thank you i think sir there is another question and that's a very interesting and you pick up some pieces around it that formalizing the freelancing and aggregating as a greater opportunity for services and skill uh, outsourcing from pakistan whether we talk about china or other part of the world or within pakistan so as a as a as a as a chief executive of uh, investment and trade do you think there is any chance that you can really promote that to recognize freelancing as a or outsourcing as a separate industry not only the it but outsourcing in any form whether we are talking about architecture uh, architects or engineers or doctor who are not working they are working as a freelancer and delivering services <laughs> while working yeah. from home whether they are lawyer accountants I- it professional absolutely i i think they if we can capitalize on the potential that we have and also the demand that the world is the the, the world is generating uh i uh, we are at a very uh, important uh, crossroad of uh, of our e-commerce uh and this i would related to the e-commerce policy i i think the government should uh, you know fast track the 
policy formulation uh, uh, in support of these freelance i am i am a big supporter of uh, freelance that is happening but also again i would urge upon all those and venturing into this uh, sphere of business is remember the ethics ethical codes and best practices please please do not deviate please promise what you can achieve please take the order where you have experience unless you do that one failed order or one bad practice identified brings the entire system to at a question mark so thank you sir so, i'm just looking at the time so i think uh, thank you very much i think it's a great session we had uh, we are getting a lot of praise as well online and uh, we got most of the questions we answered and if there is any question we will pick up later i think in i this, would also like I, to take I'm this time to thank uh, our colleague who are managing on a packet yeah in this time and age if you get praise on social media you should be very happy <laughs> so yeah, the praise praise is specifically from uh, the 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 way you have really conducted that and the comments mm -hmm. there so we will be kept li like uh, collecting it and sharing it uh, i also like to thank uh, our our colleagues who are managing the entire technology on the back end uh, asad hamid khan who is uh, uh, head of business development pakistan we have got aksa sati who is looking after marketing and we got washid khan there as well uh, who is also looking after the marketing side so thank you very much for making it happen just to summarize quickly uh, i think there is a challenge so nobody can deny that the covid 19 is a one of a challenge but there is certain areas which we have to understand and recognize that how we create the response so it's not the the crisis which defines you it's your response which defines you who you are and agar hum isko dekhe to isme do teen cheeze badi important hain ek to definitely pakistan ke liye bahut si opportunities hain jo hasan daud sahab ne highlight bhi ki partnership china ke sath asean ke sath ye partnerships and which we should explore as a as a businesses as a individual or at a government level everybody has a role to play there we also talked about the the key areas jahan pe hamare paas what we have like jab global supply chain agar disrupt ho rahi hai to kaun sa areas hain jahan pe pakistan already ready hai to hamare paas ek middle class ek workforce available hai hamare paas economic zones hain जो अंडर बी आर आई के पी के इकोनॉमिक जोन जहाँ पे चाइनीज खुद इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं हमारे पास एक लीडरशिप अवेलेबल है पाकिस्तान रोल अमंग डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज वी आर अ पार्ट ऑफ अ फूड सप्लाईज एंड देर इज अटन इंसेंटिव पैकेजेस विच आर अवेलेबल और विल बी अवेलेबल फॉर द इंडस्ट्री इफ पीपल डिसाइड टू मूव इट टू पाकिस्तान बट डेफिनेटली इसको प्रमोट करने के लिए जरूरत है कमर्शियल अटैचिस को अलॉन्ग साथ लेके चलने की जरूरत है चैम्बर्स को अपना एक रोल प्ले करना है इट कांट बी अ वन इंडिविजुअल एफर्ट इट हैज टू बी अ कलेक्टिव एफर्ट हम सबको इकट्ठे होके अपना अपना एक रोल उसमें प्ले करना है और उस रोल को प्ले करने के लिए जो हसन साहब ने एक बड़ा अच्छा वो दिया था कि हमारे पास एक टॉप डाउन अप्रोच आनी चाहिए एक हमें लीडरशिप लेसन जो है वो ये है कि टॉप से अगर आप शुरू करेंगे तो बाकी सारी टीम्स अलाइन होना शुरू हो जाती हैं तो अगर हम उन ट्रेड्स की भी बात करें जो इस सारे रिलेशनशिप को आगे लेके जाने के लिए जरूरी है जिसमें ट्रस्ट एथिक्स एम्पथी इनोवेशन इंटेग्रिटी ये सारे वो बिहेवियर और ट्रेड्स हैं जो इस रिलेशनशिप को और इस इको को और टू टू मेक श्योर के पाकिस्तान और पाकिस्तान के बिजनेस जो हैं वो ग्लोबल वैल्यू चेन का पार्ट हो तो उनके लिए ये ट्रेड्स हमें रिफ्लेक्ट करना पड़ेंगे कोविड 19 के दौरान तो हमने कुछ नए लाइक द फ्यूचर ऑफ द वर्क और फ्यूचर ऑफ द वर्क प्लेस पर भी बात की जिसमें कुछ नए बिहेवियर्स भी इवॉल्व होंगे जिसमें लोग आपस में एक दूसरे को किस तरह लेके चलेंगे आपस में गुफ्तु किस तरह होगी और ऑनर्स और एम्प्लॉयज और मैनेजर्स की साइड से एक बहुत बड़ी रिक्वायरमेंट जो आएगी वो एम्पथी की आएगी कि वाइल पीपल आर वर्किंग फ्रॉम होम तो एम्पथी की जो प्रैक्टिस है यानी एक दूसरे का ख्याल रखना एक दूसरे की केयर करना एक दूसरे को सपोर्ट करना वो एक बहुत बड़ा और इम्पोर्टेंट एलिमेंट होगा इसके साथ ही हमारे सेशन का टाइम जो है इस वक्त खत्म हो रहा है आई वुड सजेस्ट कि आप सारे जितने भी डायरेक्टिव गवर्नमेंट के आ रहे हैं और डब्ल्यू एच ओ के आ रहे हैं सो यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस दो प्रिकॉशन स्टे सेफ स्टे कनेक्टेड एंड कीप प्रोग्रेसिंग इन योर लाइफ थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू हसन साहब एंड थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू